Hey everybody and welcome to my Sunday school class. We're going to begin with a song that I have pre-recorded so you can worship along or sing along if you like, okay? <laughs> The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. He stands And time is in His hand Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The God at three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God All will see how great How great is our God Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, so our Sunday school class today, the title of our class is called, Called to Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, the key verse for our class today comes from Psalms 9, uh, verse 8. And uh, this is how it reads. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Thank you for a new day. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he will save you 
from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. And underneath his wings you will find refuge. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You will only see with your eyes the punishment of the wicked. Thank you, Father, for your safety. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. Your mercy endureth forever. Your mercy endureth through all generations. And Father, I pray this day for my Sunday school class, Father. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my Savior and my Redeemer. And I pray the precious Holy Spirit would anoint me to speak your words, the words that you want your people to hear and be an encouragement to somebody for we ask it in Jesus' matchless name. And the church said, Amen. All right. Okay, so um, let's go to our uh, class and... Uh, uh, let's start with the biblical context, okay? Um, all our scriptures are coming from Psalms 9, uh, verse 1 through 12. But let's look at the biblical context, okay? Psalm 9 celebrates God's goodness and help in the face of an enemy. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! How many of you are facing enemies this very moment as you're listening? Amen? <laughs> uh, so it celebrates, this psalm celebrates God's goodness and help in the face of an enemy. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen? So this psalm was originally joined with Psalm 10. A plea for action against the enemy. In certain Hebrew and Latin manuscripts like the Vulgate, Psalms 9 and 10 appear together as one composition. The two Psalms form an acrostic using the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. While the tone of Psalms 9 is highly national, engaging all, Psalms 10 is intensely personal. Some scholars suggest that perhaps David wrote this psalm recalling his triumph over the Philistine enemy. Amen? Remember the fight of David and Goliath? <laughs> Here's little David, a poor shepherd boy, <laughs> with a slingshot. <laughs> and here's Goliath. Uh, 11-foot giant, okay, uh, in full armor and sword and shield and spear and everything. And David just brings him down with one smooth stone, a hit of that smooth stone right in the middle of his forehead. Hallelujah, and down goes the triumph. So maybe this uh, psalm is about uh, David celebrating his victory over his Philistine enemy, Goliath, from the vantage point of many years since that victory. Amen? Uh, okay. All right. So let's go to the analysis of the biblical text. And point number one uh, is praise God. For his justice, Psalms 9, 1 through 4. So let's look at Psalms 9, 1 through 4. Okay. Psalms 9, 1 through 4. So here is Psalms 9. Uh, and I'll begin with verse 1. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. 
I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. Amen. Hallelujah. They stumble and fell and fall before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So uh, let's let's look at that uh, text and uh, examine it a little bit further. All right. So uh, here we go. Um, David in this psalm uh, is praising God for his justice. This psalm of David's opens with a personal testimony. Few things are more meaningful than praise that is personalized. Amen. Hallelujah. That's when you testify about the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to do that. We need to testify about the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Musicians. Choirs. Praise teams. Soloists. Directors and other leaders in worship serve important roles. Their goal is to lead the congregation into an authentic, personal encounter with God. Until praise and worship become personal, they're far from authentic. Instead of calling the congregation to gratitude, the psalmist begins with the personal declaration, I will. The psalmist gives Wholehearted thanks to God. Verse 1. The psalmist is not addressing an individual you or a collective us. Again he says, I will speak of the wonderful things God has done. You're telling your own story forces you to reflect. Those who reflect on the Lord's works on their behalf are often stirred to expressions of joy and gratitude and praise um, and, and praise to the Lord Most High. The psalmist focuses on how God turned back the psalmist's enemies causing them to fall and perish at the sight of his presence. Verse 3. Recounting special, uh, specific details about the workings of the Lord. We should not imagine that God always joins our side in our battles and disagreements. Our priority is not to always win at any cost, but to always be on God's side, conforming ourselves to his word and to his will. The psalmist understood his personal victory as divine vindication from the throne of God. Verse 4, a sweet judgment against his enemy from the just and righteous judge who rules heaven and earth. Amen. No wonder the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. And Jesus said, Love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you and despitefully use you. Why? Because the scripture says, Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. Leave everything in the hands of God. Hallelujah. And that's what David did. Amen. All right. What do you think? 
share your inner feelings when you share of God's deliverance and or vindication in your life. Hallelujah. You know, when uh, seven years ago, uh, as I often testify, I had throat cancer, fourth stage throat cancer. And the Lord safely brought me through surgery and chemo and radiation. Hallelujah. And that was seven years ago. And I'm still here praising and worshiping God. Hallelujah. That should encourage you that even when we go through fiery trials, the Lord is always with us and he sees us safely through. Amen. And if I was to testify about everything that the, God, uh, that the Lord has done for me in my life, <clears throat> these last 38 years since I have been saved, uh, we'd be here all night, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, all right. So let's, let's go on, okay? Uh, point number two is praise God for his righteousness. Psalms 9, 5 through 8. So let's go to Psalms 9, 5 through 8. Okay? So here it is. All right? Psalms 9, verse 5. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their names forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Uh, and then uh, the Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Let's, let's look at these scriptures in, in greater detail. Okay. Uh, let's look at them. Uh, as the psalmist shared his love for the Lord. Encouraging others to worship God, offering additional reasons for praise. God rebuked the unbelieving heathen, destroyed the wicked, and removed their name forever. Verse 5. Hallelujah. David saw God in action among the nations, righteously judging the wicked and removing the enemy from his presence. God is omnipotent. Hallelujah. Which means he's all powerful. Amen. God is omnipotent. He is omniscient. Which means he knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. In fact, he is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending. Amen. And then he is omnipresent, which means he can be present everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. And some of you are watching me from far away in India and in Canada and uh, um, Australia. <laughs> and you can feel the presence of God. And you can feel his presence even as I'm sharing this word with you. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He can uproot an enemy or absolutely eliminate any issues, problems or troubles we may confront. When God takes up our case, he handles it once and for all. That's why we, the scripture says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, amen. Uh, upon the final destruction of his enemies, David takes no personal credit. Instead, he acknowledges that the Lord is God 
who reigns forever as the righteous judge. Okay. Uh, God shall continue to rule and reign over the world with righteousness, delivering verdicts that vindicate righteousness. It is fitting to give God praise for his victorious, righteous reign in our life. Hallelujah. This psalm is a word of comfort and hope for those who are still facing enemies and wondering if God's justice will ever be seen on their behalf. God never fails and his righteousness shall prevail. Amen. <clears throat> Many times we go through circumstances and situations in life where we, 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 we think, is God ever going to do something about the situation? Lord, aren't you going to do something? Lord, look at your enemies. It seems like they're getting away with murder, Lord. Do something. Amen. But we need not be afraid. For in the proper time, his judgment comes to pass. And he judges everyone with equity. Aha! He doesn't play favorites with anybody. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Huh? And, and God never fails. And his righteousness shall prevail. Sometimes we get so impatient. Um, and, 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 and instead of waiting on the Lord, uh, we, we rush here and rush there and do things, you know, uh, instead of just simply waiting on the Lord. That's why the Bible says, wait upon the Lord. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So here's the question. What do you think? How do you encourage others when they feel defeated by an enemy or life's circumstances? Hallelujah. How do you do that? Huh? How do you encourage others? You encourage them by uh, exhorting them to wait upon the Lord. You, you encourage them by convincing them that God is trustworthy. And there is a time that's going to come, even if it's not here this very second, where justice shall prevail. Amen? Justice will prevail. Hallelujah. His God is in complete control. But he's not willing that any, any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Amen. So sometimes it seems like. It's taking so long for God to act. But that's because. He's so gracious. He gives people chance after chance after chance after chance to repent and turn back to him. And then when it still doesn't happen, then judgment falls on the enemies. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise God for his memory. Point number three. Psalms 9, 9 through 12. So let's do that. Uh, Psalms 9, 9 through 12. All right. Here's what it says. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Ah, he's a refuge for the oppressed. A stronghold, a fortress in the times of trouble. Amen. Let's go on with this. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. 
Amen and amen. Isn't that wonderful to know? That those that know the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they're safe. Hallelujah. And the Lord has never forsaken those who seek Him. Amen. So we don't have to worry. Ah. Because He never forsakes us. He's faithful. Our God is faithful. And His mercy endures forever and ever. Through all generations. Not just my generation. The generation of my children. And my children's children. And my children's children's children. And so on. Hallelujah. Sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers he does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Hallelujah. Did you hear what it says? He avenges <coughs> blood. Remember? God, Jesus said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. So he is the one who avenges. He is the one who remembers. And he does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Hallelujah. People who are being uh, treated unfairly, who are being treated like dirt. Uh, God remembers all that. And he hears their cries. Amen. He's not deaf to their cries. He hears their cries. So let's let's go to um, to these scriptures and look at them in, in greater detail. Okay. So, uh, all right. Let's see. Um, like the psalmist, we can be grateful that God does more for us than judge the wicked. Our God. Covers us, protecting us from being oppressed by the wicked. Hallelujah. Amen. He covers us and he protects us. Amen. Amen. And uh, I worked at Chattanooga State for 26 years. And it was the Lord that kept me. Because they were constantly plotting and planning to get me. But they were not successful. And then just as I turned 66. I was suddenly told that my. <laughs> my position. Was eliminated. And I thought wow. And for a moment there I was thinking God. You protected me for 26 years. And uh, you know I was planning on. Retiring when I was 70 years old. And now I'll have to retire at 66, Lord. Uh, uh, what's going on? You know? And uh, I didn't hear any answer back from the Lord. But I felt like I needed to trust Him. Amen? And you know what? Now when I look back, He was working all things Together for my good. Hallelujah. Because had I not retired when I was 66. I would not have had an opportunity. To go to Bombay in 2018. And visit my sister. Whom I had not seen for the last 10 years. Hallelujah. And I was able to visit with her. And, and talk to her. For a long time. For almost 11 months. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. And uh, I was even able to. Uh, 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 have her. Uh, accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. How cool was that. Hallelujah. And God did so many miracles. When I went to uh, Bombay. Uh, I had a huge financial miracle. When I went there too. And now when I look back and I thought, and, and I think, my, 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 God already knew what he had in store for me. Hallelujah. And he was actually looking out for my best interests. 
And in 2019, my sister passed away. Hallelujah. So I would not have been able to spend that time with her just before she passed. Hallelujah. And lead her to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you see how faithful God is? He's faithful even when we're not at times faithful. Okay? Ah, he is forever faithful, never turning his back on those that seek safety in his loving care. This is a good reason to sing praises to the Lord. This is also a good reason to declare or make known his deeds to all nations in the earth. Even when we find ourselves in our very lowest point, we can trust in the Lord to help us. He will never forget or leave us. God hears, remembers our cries and pleads for help. Even if his deliverance is delayed, we can be confident that our God will not ignore us in our suffering. When the world seems like a ball of confusion, trust that our God is always in control. Rejoice! He rules forever with justice and righteousness. No wonder the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Ah. Many adults can recall when parents promised a delayed punishment for misbehavior. Now here's the question. What do you think? They might say just wait until we get home. Or, you know you're in trouble. Whatever else they might have forgotten, parents never seem to forget that punishment. Why is it wrong to imagine that God's delayed judgment means that evildoers are off the hook? Hallelujah! Remember, I explained that to you already. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So he even gives, uh, gives the wicked chance after chance after chance to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, here's a, uh, you know, uh, and, and there's a scripture that says, uh, because God does not speedily bring things into judgment. It's in the book of Ecclesiastes. The hearts of men are set on doing evil. And many times evil people think they're getting away with murder. They're getting away with oppression. They're getting away with wickedness. But that is not true. In due time, justice will prevail. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Now this week, consider Deuteronomy 32 and 35 and Romans 12 and 19, which teaches us, us that vengeance is the Lord's. As you reflect, consider the reasons for why we try to handle things on our own. Is this a show of faith or a sign of pride? Ooh, Lord, please help us. Pride is something we all, if we're, if we're ready to admit, we all struggle with. Amen. Lord, help us with our pride, Lord. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble, to the meek. All right, here's a closing fire prayer. Father, thank you for the assurance of your omnipotent presence with us in every challenge. In a troubled world, we're grateful that we can trust in your unfailing love for us and your righteous judgment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to listen now to that song, that pre-recorded song uh, that I was singing earlier, okay? <laughs> The splendor of a king 
clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God Oh, we'll see how great How great is our God to age he stands and time is in his hand beginning and the end beginning and the end the God had three in one Father Spirit Son The lion and the lamb, lion and the lamb, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, oh we'll see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and thank you for listening, and now may the Lord bless you and keep you, may the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and be gracious unto you, the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, we ask it in Jesus matchless name, hallelujah. Please share this with your friends and neighbors, okay? In Jesus' matchless name, amen.